Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for the invitation to be here. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Uh, India is a fascinating place and Saturday I, I, I went to the river again just and put my hands in the river and, and now I'm blessed and purified <laughs> and ready to talk about pure spinners. <laughs> Um, I, so the, the, the purpose of, of these lectures will be um, <clears throat> I, I, I want to show to you how, how you can compute scattering amplitudes using the, the pure spinal form measure. And um, there, there are some uh, kind of there are more or less three three types of difficulties associated with amplitudes in string theory. One of them is uh, when, when you increase the, the, the number of external particles that you are scattering, so obviously computing the 5-point amplitude is, is uh, harder than computing the 4-point amplitude. That's one type of difficulty. Another type of difficulty is increasing the, the number of loops. Computing a one loop amplitude is harder than computing a 3-type of amplitude, usually. And that, that, there is also a third type of of task uh, that, that you need to do uh, related to amplitudes is when, when you arrive at the answer that, that there are usually some integrals left. What we usually do is we compute the integral of the amplitude and then you, you can ask what's the, the momentum expansion of, of those integrals. Um, say people say that alpha prime expansions. And when, when you do that, well, uh, you, you get uh, very interesting mathematical properties. Uh, you see some mathematical properties that are related to what Anibam was, was talking about last week. But uh, in, in my lectures, I, 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 will, I will try to address the, the type of... Um, well, I, I will try to address the, the, the point one that I, I, I made about the difficulties. When you increase the number of external legs. And what, what I'm going to show to you is that life is not that, that hard anymore. Um, because um, when the computing scattering amplitudes at least at three level, um, well, we, we, we arrive at that uh, uh, end point uh, that, that there is now that there is available uh, the, the end point result of, of these amplitudes and I, I'm, I'm going to show to you how, how we arrive at the, the things and um, yeah okay so um, what else was I supposed to uh, motivate you um, oh and uh, okay so I, I will use the, the three point uh, the, the three level prescription as a motivation to to tell you about the techniques that we, we are currently using to, to tackle uh, the computation of amplitudes. But don't don't be despaired by, by the fact that I'm I, I will be talking mostly about three level amplitudes because the techniques they, they will also apply for loop level amplitudes. And for example, if, if there, there is enough time, I guess in the last lecture I, I, I can probably show to you how <coughs> the, the, the three loop amplitude was computed. And in, in some of the steps in, in, in that calculation, uh, we use the, the, the techniques of uh, multiparticle superfuse that I, I'm going to, to try to explain. So I also promised that. Uh, I, I, I was going to discuss some conventions, and uh, so we will always be in ten-dimensional space where x uh, and usually well we, we will be in super space m from zero to nine and alpha from one to sixteen, and th these are the same uh, variables that uh, Nathan was mentioned today, and uh, as he said, uh, the, 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 the position of, of the spinor index matters, 
there are the, so this is called the, the viral representation, and this is the antiviral or chiral and anti chiral. And th th there is no way to to raise or lower these indices in 10 dimensions because the conjugation <coughs> charge matrix is off diagonal. So you cannot construct something like the, the analogous of a. Uh, of, uh, What, what you, for example, you cannot construct a scalar like, like you do for xm, and then you define the, the lower the lowering of indices like that. So because the yeah, the charge conjugation matrix is of the and um, yeah. So now, now I, I'm going to repeat a bit what Nathan uh, told you, but repetition is not always that bad. Uh, so the, the 32 dimensional gamma matrices will be split like this, the 16 by 16 matrices, uh, the, the Pauli matrices, uh, that, those ones, and um, yes, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the symmetry properties of these spinner indices. Oh, and by the way, uh, anytime questions, just just ask. Uh, so, um, okay, uh, and uh, I'm also going to need to specify the, the Clifford algebra. That's the convention that I, I'm using. And I, I, I will not bother about the position of vector indices, if they are upstairs or, or downstairs. So that, that's the, the Clifford algebra. And uh, the, the definition of anti-symmetrized gamma matrices that I use is this one. So that algebra is of SO10 or SO10? Yeah, SO10. Uh, yeah, everything that I do here is in weak rotated space, so SO10. But US spinners are of SO10 or SO microphone? Yeah, it's SO10. So they move? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> weak rotated everywhere. Okay, so that spinner is my own spinner or no? Well, um, well it, it depends on, on the type of spinner. Say uh, what, what I wrote here, I just specify that it's viral or antiviral. I can also specify if it's my or not. But it, it depends on, on the type of, of, of field that you are talking about. But in, in 10 dimensions, you, you can have uh, my or in and viral conditions simultaneously. But uh, that condition is just in equal snipe on one line. If you work with SO10, I think that we can impose. Ah, okay. Um, well, the, okay. There, there might be this kind of subtleties, but uh, I'm, I'm not. Okay. No. They, 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 they never. Uh, you, 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 you are allowed to not worry about them at, at this level. Okay. Um, but okay, yeah. So. Right. Um, So the convention for anti-symmetrization uh, of gamma matrices is uh, like this, you multiply like that, and um, the, the gamma, the gamma, the, the one form is symmetric to the spinor indices, so you, you uh, it's symmetric and then the two the two form the the, the positions of, of the spinners uh, the spin rings is are these ones simply because you, you always need to contract downstairs with upstairs and vice versa and um, and the symmetry for, for this one is anti-symmetric anti so so now it's like that, and then okay. So that that that's the what people call the one form, 
and uh, the two form. And in general, um, the, the, the three form is uh, anti symmetric. So it's the, the three form. Oh, let me write like this. Uh, the one form, the, the five form, well, the, the four form also, the five. And uh, what you get from dualizing, the, these, these forms are symmetric, and, and the others are six, seven, and, and they, they are anti symmetric in the spinor indices. But you, you always need to, to pay attention to what type of. of um, the, the positions for, for these spinor indices. Um, say, for example, the four form is also one downstairs and another upstairs. Okay, so these um, these are the, the symmetry properties of these matrices, and um, another another type of fact that you need to know is that. Uh, the forms higher than 5 are related to lower than 5 by the epsilon 10 tensor and uh, the, the gamma 5, uh, the 5 form is self-dual or anti-self-dual depending on, on the positions of the What was your comment about symmetry? 1, 4, 5, 8, 9, these are numbers or what? Yeah, yeah okay, so th these are the, the forms. Okay. So the, the, the one form is that one. Okay. It's symmetric, and similarly the, the four form and the, the five form. Yeah, so it's, it's a compact uh, way to. Work. But thank you for. Uh, um, and another type of um, manipulations that we do with, with gamma matrices all the time is um, you, that there are formulas to, to decompose um, the, the anti-symmetrized indices for example um, you, you, do, you get something like this uh, mp gamma n and then minus del n and, and the, 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 there are general formulas for, for this type of, of manipulation but they, they are very very useful and I, I'm, I'm going to show examples where I, I do this kind of decomposition so that, that's another thing that people should keep in mind and Another very important identity in 10 dimensions is... These two gammas, upper indices and lower indices, they are numerically the same. The gamma index. The, this one? Yeah. No, they, they are not the same. They are not numerical. No, they are not. They are different. Um, I, 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 I have them in, in some, okay. some conventions and I, I can... So when you say gamma A men uh, lower alpha upper beta that tells you the order in which you are multiplying these two gamma. Well, no, not not well, not really because the ordering is specified by by the, <coughs> the position. So because by the index position that tells you the first one is lower and the second yes, one is upper. Yes, yes, true. And, uh, yeah. and this relation hold also for the Lorentz case. It's only Euclidean. Like, could I replace delta PM by just eta PM and... Oh, yeah, okay. The, the, this type of question, I, I really don't know the answer. It's, it's a Euclidean or Lorentzian. I, I, I do these computations in always Euclidean space and, and that's... that's uh, and, but, um, no, the, the, this identity is also true for, for Lorentz metric. Um, yeah, it's, it's true in general. But I, I'm always sloppy about the position of the, the vector indices, and uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so the the other identity that is very important is this one. You you see.
symmetrize beta, gamma, and delta and contract up uh, the, the vector indices and that's zero. And the, the, the proof for, for this identity is uh, you can look at page 246 on, on Richard Clinton volume 1. That's related to all supersymmetry uh, of the superending section in dimensions 3, 4, 10. Alpha, beta. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I'm symmetrizing. So alpha, beta. and then beta, gamma, delta, they are symmetrized. So there are three terms in this identity. It sounds okay. like. Okay. Beta, gamma, delta, symmetrized. Yeah. And then plus alpha, <coughs> delta, um, beta, gamma, then alpha, gamma, delta, beta. That's zero. And Nathan also um, wrote down the the covariant derivative and I'm just uh, going to repeat the convention is, is this one it's the same convention that he wrote this morning and uh, we are going to use that all the time as well <coughs> and um, yeah so that, that's, that's more or less what, what I wanted to, to mention about the conventions um, of course, there, there are many more identities that you can you can get from from these matrices. But if 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 I am going to need them, then I, I will simply write them down as 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 I as I need them. So um, okay. So that that these are the conventions. So. Now I'm, I'm going to, to write down the, the three level amplitude prescription and, <coughs> and as a motivation for what we, we are going to need to, to do next. So we, in the year 2000, uh, Berkowitz wrote down the, the prescription to compute the three level amplitude. The endpoint three level amplitude was. Uh, uh, I'm just going to write down the prescription. So this V is a label I, is, is the same one that Nathan had this morning. And uh, so in, 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 in the lectures, these labels will, will play an essential role. So um, single particle, um, well, lo lowercase letters like this, uh, I, J, something like that, they, they denote a single particle. So that, that's a type of label that you use, for example, when and you uh, compute a name, like that. something like that, then you say, well, particle 1, 2, 3, 4, th these are the labels that, that I, I, I'm going to use there. And um, so that, that's the unintegrated vertex. And uh, so it's conformal with zero. And the uh, integrated vertex has this form: the alpha, the alpha plus And now I'm 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 going to. There are a lot of things to, to mention about this, this prescription and the, the next uh, like 10 or 15 minutes 
I, I just want to state what, what all these this mean. And, um, Theta is the constant. Oh, theta is now. Theta is the superspace theta. Theta is the expression of u i. Yes. Theta. Yeah, that theta. It's yeah. Well, it's the one two. Del del z. It's the conform weight one. Okay, so that that's what. That's what I want to... Um, what is weight? Weight equal to zero? No, oh, the conformal weight. Yeah, so this is conformal weight zero and the other one is conformal weight one. So this is integrated over the surface. And I forgot to mention that the, the color ordering of the string amplitude is dictated by how, how you... Uh, the, the, the region of integration of, of these integrals. So if well if you insert particle uh, uh, yeah then that's the, uh, the the regions specify the, the color order and um <coughs> sorry this is not n equals one supersymmetry integration to superspace no? yeah yeah the, that same equals one but the theta is not constant global supersymmetry what what do you mean? No, it's a world sheet field. Theta is a world sheet field. It's a theta article. It's like green source. Oh, what is it? It's not the world sheet field. You are just not going to go into the string, right? Oh, there is a function sigma term. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a few more than the world sheet field. So this T and W are the same ones that Nathan introduced this morning? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to mention uh, what, what these superfields are, but in, in a few minutes. I, I'm, right now I'm just going to uh, talk about these, these fields here. So, um, okay, so these guys here, they, they have conform weight 1. And well, they, they have some names. So, so this is the supersymmetric momentum. This is the, the Green Schwartz constraint that uh, Nathan was talking about this morning for, for the super particle. And, uh, and, and this is the, 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 the Lorentz current generator for, for the, the, the pure spin of values. And the, the OP is that. Um, so, the N is a composite thing made out of other surfaces? Yes, yes. Uh, and it sounds like gamma m n one like that. So where well, 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 lambda is the pure spinner and um, and is omega or w is the <coughs> is the conjugate momentum uh, it, it's the, it's the same w that uh, Nathan had in this this morning for, for the action. But yeah, um, the same as the D alpha. The D alpha has a double set super Yes, yes. Uh, it's D alpha double alpha. Carlos, I'm sorry. That U is Gaussian invariant or not? Oh uh, no. Well, the the U itself is it's not Gaussian invariant, but when when you integrate over the surface, it is. Uh, okay. I'm yeah. So. Um, Nathan also mentioned this this morning. So the, the gauge variation of A alpha is D alpha of omega and the gauge variation of A M is um, the, it's the derivative of this omega and, and these are gauge invariant at the linear acid level. And uh, once, once you plug these transformations here, you see that uh, you see the, the chain rule. Oh, you get um, delta theta alpha. Uh, so the, the, the variation of u is plus uh, pi n delta n of omega. And um, and now you 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 plug in this expression here. And 
uh, I, I didn't write down what, what this, this guy is, but um, so it's del x m um, minus 1 half um, Oh, it, it's uh, it's theta del theta and oh, it's 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 like this. It's uh, del x m and then theta gamma m del theta. And when 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 you plug these two expressions here, you will see that these these terms cancel for for that one because you get a, a del theta from here multiplying that. And uh, well, you you need to use the symmetry of, of the sorry. What is what are you showing? Del x m equal. What is that equation? Oh, okay. Uh, so what, what what I want to show is that if you apply the, the gauge variations of of the composing superfields here in U, that that's what you get. And this is a total derivative. Uh, if you use the chain rule, it's yeah. del theta alpha multiplying that part and uh, del x m multiplying del m so that, that's that's uh, the, the derivative from on z space of omega so when, when you integrate over the surface here you get zero um, <coughs> Yes, so, so M, M L is the only the pure spinner part of the Lorentz current. Is it? That, that, that is constructed out of only W and M L. Yes. That's the, only the pure spinner part yes, of the yes. Lorentz current. Yes. The, the, the matter variables will come from here. Yeah. Um, okay, I have run out of space, but. Um, I think I can erase this. So the, the OK is that uh, will be important for us in the next lecture will be phi m of c of any superfuel <coughs> s of w that's Zero modes of, of theta. Yeah, it contains only zero modes um, of theta. So, this, so the, 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 the green shots constraint acts as a covariant derivative and the supersymmetric momentum acts uh, uh, as a just picks the, the momentum of, of the, the, the particle described by the superfluid. And then the, the other... The scale is a constant. No people think it's a constant. Okay. Okay, so... Um, so, it's a moment. Yeah, yeah, so the momentum. So, well, what, what I didn't say here is that oh, x... Um, um, for me, the x variable is always in a plane wave. So for me, it, uh, I always expand the superfluid like that in, in a plane wave. And it's theta only. Yeah, so that, that's theta only and then the x is sitting on, on the plane wave. And what, what I usually do is I set i to 1. And, uh, and yeah. Uh, and Nathan this morning also had this I of, of theta, gamma, of theta, something like that, and, and he explained that, well, okay, if, if you don't have the I here, then the emission conjugation, you, you need to hope for the best. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And the, the A theta, the theta is only zero modes. Yes, yes. So that there are no del thetas. That that's important. Um, yeah. Okay. So the, the last of E is the OP between this uh, boring standard <coughs> and the first pillar. And that's minus 1F uh, comma lambda gamma in M lambda. It's a simple pole. So that simply tells you that lambda transforms it as, a, as a spinner. Like, like it's supposed to, to be. And okay, so th these are the so remember these numbers because they I, I will refer to them later. And another uh, in this theta is a formal invariant, right? Theta is 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 uh, Grassmann odd. Yes, yes, it's Grassmann odd. So okay, so theta, yeah, so theta is odd. This superfield is odd, this is even, odd, and even. So theta is odd, d alpha is odd. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the alpha is, is Grassmann odd. It's fermionic. Um, yeah, and W? And W is fermionic. That's what Yeah, so fermionic, fermionic is bosonic. So this guy is bosonic. Um, yeah, so bosonic, bosonic, fermionic, fermionic, bosonic, bosonic, fermionic, fermionic. And so on the word sheet, the only bosonic spinner that you have is lambda? Yes, yes. Sorry, there are two W's. I think that's the answer. W is a W spinner also. W is a W spinner? Well, the, the conjugate momentum, you, you mean? Yeah, okay. That, but that, that, that one is not this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. is super. This W is super. Yeah, this one is the super. Yeah, but the, the small W is the. And the, the small W, yeah, it, it's the one that sits inside here. Okay. But it will never really explicitly appear anywhere. Yes. And so does that also satisfy the spinner constraint? What? The small W, does it also satisfy the spinner constraint? Um, no. Um, Oh, Nathan's here, but I... I it's a gate, it's a gate. What? It has a gate, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 there, there, there is a gate, well, that, that's what means that there is a gate invariance associated to this guy, which is... Something like that. I think so. Actually, it is the momentum corresponding mm -hmm. to lambda. Yeah, yeah, but so it doesn't have a pure spin at once. No, no that, not that kind. So because of that constraint, this is a gate state. Mm -hmm. So the small w lambda is 1 by z minus w op. It's, it's not really useful to think uh, in terms of OPs of a naked w, uh, small w with, with a lambda. Because that you, you need to satisfy the, the pure spinner constraint in, in that OP, and then the OP gets <coughs> more complicated. So, it's, it's useful to, to use uh, OPEs where W appears in gauge invariant combinations like this. So that's why small W for me, it, 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 you should not really bother too much about the, the small W at this level. Um, that, that's, that small W appears at, at loop level computations in, in the, the regulator, but I'm, I'm not going to, at least not now. Carlos, so V is odd? V is odd. For reason, odd, right? Sure. <coughs> and U is even, right? U. Yeah, U, U is bosonic, and V is fermionic, uh, the tree spinner is bosonic, and that's fermionic. Yeah, so it, it, it's good that we are setting the, these, these uh, the conventions right because in, in the computations, these minus signs, they, they, they all matter a lot when you commute. And, uh, yeah.
Yeah, and then the Q is, is the BRST track. It's very simple, like Nathan wrote this morning. And um, and uh, these these vertices they satisfy Q of U is del V and Q of V is zero. So it's PST closer. That's the same <coughs> condition of this morning. And so um, <coughs> this okay, so um, yeah, so the, these two conditions here simply tell you that what's uh, the the amplitude that you are going to compute is BRST invariant. What what what's inside this pure spinner bracket that I, I still didn't uh, define, but what what's inside here is uh, say some superfield M that will, will be there. This M in the end is is closed because the, the vertices and, and uh, they, they, they are BRST closed. So because well, the, this one is integrated, and here. so that that's very very important. The the amplitude the, the results of, of the amplitude are BRST invariant. Yes. So why is it non-zero Yes. Why is it non-zero Oh, um, I, I still didn't specify what's the measure. And the measure is from non yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I understood your question. Uh, are, are you worried that uh, V V would be zero because it's fermionic, but there are labels. They are different. These are like the seeds. Yeah. In RLS, you have the seed, right? Three times dimension. V C is at no no and the rest are integrated. Well they're the different points. Yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and these guys are really different. They they, they have been associated labels, they describe in different particles and the uh, expansions are different. Um, okay, so then that's... Um, okay, what do you do? In oh, what, what? This end? Yeah, th this is some, some notation that uh, I just came up with right now to, to specify that uh, the, the result of, of that computation that you're going to do over there is something. And that's something I said it's n, and from these two conditions, the, the important fact is that this n will be BRST closed, and uh, it will also uh, be in the tomorrow. QV equal to zero is true only on shell. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's uh, the, that, that's what Nathan was was talking about. This uh, uh, imposing this condition here means that you put the square wheels on shell. But I, I, I will talk about the equation of motion with any, any other question? It, it's good that um, this is very important that we, we get all these, these uh, signs and conventions right. Okay, so the next thing that I need to, to talk about is what, what I mean by, by this pure spinner bracket. And the, when, when, you, when you start with that correlator, it means that you integrate out the, the non-zero mode, so um, this, yeah, you integrate out uh, you, you, you use the OPEs to remove the, the non-zero modes of the, the variables that are in, in there. So the OPEs get rid of these um, conformal weight one variables. 
And in the end, after you use all OPs, you will still have these uh, three lambdas that come from here because this uh, OP never removes, never get, gets rid of lambda. So lambda will always be there. It's the, the zero mode of, of lambda will always remain. And there, there will be three of them. And I didn't really uh, explain yet, but well, these are super fields, so they depend on x and theta, and so there are thetas everywhere. There. And the, the, the zero modes of theta will also survive these OP operations. So in the end, after you use all the OPEs, you, you still have some, uh, you, you still have three numbers left and a bunch of thetas. And uh, the, the prescription there would be that uh, the, um, yeah, Nathan wrote uh, this, this condition this morning. So this lambda, lambda cube theta to the fifth is defined as There is a unique way to contract this superfix of like this of M N P M N P P. That's that's what I mean by by this combination. And <coughs> I'm, I'm I also say that this is called lambda 3 theta 5 instead of lambda cube theta to the fifth because it's easier to pronounce and since I'm defining I can find any name I want. So um, so that that's that's how you get rid of the five uh, of the remaining zero modes of the computation and once you arrive at, at this point the computation is done. There is nothing left to do. Um. So there are three lambda theta bilinear and then the last one is theta theta bilinear. Is it lambda gamma theta? Yes. Yeah. It's a lambda a three form gamma m and p and theta. Yeah. So um. There are any more theta dots in the project? What? The correlator can have more thetas also? Or? The correlator? Yeah, there can be more thetas or not? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes, the others? Yeah, the, the others are, <coughs> they, they, they vanish because you simply look at uh, the, the only non-vanishing contribution must contain five thetas. All the others you, you don't care about, you set them to zero. Why? Well, because that, that's, uh, well, that's, uh, first that's the prescription. And the other is that um, when you have three lambdas, then any other number of, of thetas, simply you cannot construct a scalar. So for example, three lambdas and six thetas, if you try to construct a scalar, you cannot construct a scalar. So the only scalar at, uh, with three lambdas is when you have five thetas. So and, and, and the, the fact that you have three <coughs> lambdas is fixed because we have three unintegrated vertices, and and that fact comes from from the SL two to Z fixing of uh, the the invariance fixing gauge fixing. So you need three vertices. That that's the, the three there. But suppose there are sixteen people, you can almost say same. Yeah yeah um well no no um. You, you, you cannot construct a, a no, scalar. Day, suppose after this year, 16 theta, with an epsilon tensor, you can have a scalar. No, that you. 16 theta scalar. Oh, lambda cube theta to the 5. Yeah. Plus, suppose you have 16 more theta. Oh, no, lambda but, lambda but, lambda but, lambda then, but then theta is, is fermionic, and oh, then there are 16. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so. But one about non-zero modes? Can't there be non-zero modes of theta? No, no, but. At, at this point, uh, I, I got rid of the non-zero modes by, by using the OPE. 
So all that is left by, by definition are the zero modes. I see. This is so we have to do non-zero modes, but we are saying that we just use OPE to express the value at that correlation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The non-zero mode correlation. Like yes. C0, C1, 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 C1 <coughs> that you are left with in the bosom. It's the analog of that. Yeah. So this density alpha doesn't serve the new idea of density alpha? Well, um, uh, this, this guy actually d doesn't play much of a role in, in com um, What if they don't in the final answer? No, no, it, it, it plays a role in, in the computation. Uh, it, it, it leaves a contribution to the double fold. So I see, so this answer is me, up me. to delta. This final answer is... No, I think well, we're no. using OP to eliminate. Yeah. They are all contracted. Yeah. They are all contracted. So we'll require some 11 thetas because uh, to get the non-zero answer, 11 thetas. So yeah. there will be some measure in which there should be 11 thetas, right? Oh, okay. No, yeah. Um, so you, you 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 can you can you can obtain this measure here using uh, integration over 16 thetas yes. and all that. But in order to see that, you, you need to to use the the non-minimal formulation or yeah, you, you need to, to use the, the no-minimum formulation and I'm, I'm not going to, to do that now. So, um, consider this a ad hoc prescription now. Okay. And, but but, but what, what I'm going to, to show next is that even though you are not integrating, um, manifesting integrating over 16 thetas, this measure still gives you supersymmetric answers. Even though you are in the end you are looking only for a, a, a five quintas instead of sixteen, but yeah, but uh, nowadays there, there, there is another another way to to use this measure integrating over sixteen quintas and but for for the purpose of, of these three level computations uh, it, it's actually easier just to to use that measure. Theta yeah. theta OP is non singular. Theta theta is non singular. OP. Theta with theta it is 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 non singular. Yeah, there is no. Yeah. Okay. So the the, the thing that <coughs> um, I want to say is that this guy is BRST closed and it's it's not. The beer is separation of something else. So. constraint and when Q hits this factor here 
you will get 2 times lambda gamma m and p theta. The 2 is because I hit here, and then the, the next time I anti commute, I get a minus sign. I hit theta there, I, it becomes a lambda, but then I convert back using the anti symmetry of the gamma matrix. To, to put the, the lambda here, so that's why you get a factor of 2. Um, and now, to show that uh, when, when Q hits, when you get this factor here, you get 0, you, you can use that decomposition there. Um, so, well, let, let, let me do it once, just to Let, let you see this computation once and uh, okay so now I use that identity over there and then the, this this factor becomes lambda gamma m and p theta plus delta m and theta and then the, uh, there, 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 there is an uh, mn and then p theta so what, why, why this is 0? now I, I need to use this identity here and uh, a corollary of, of this identity there and, and, and the, the pure spinner condition is that lambda gamma m anything here compacted with lambda gamma m beta is zero for everything that you contract in alpha and beta there if the if you get a lambda gamma m lambda gamma m that's zero and to see this you simply multiply this this identity there by two lambdas and one term will be uh, zero because of the Christina constraint and the other will be minus the, the, the term so they are zero. So uh, and now you, you use this identity here. So you see lambda gamma m there, lambda gamma m here, that's zero. And then well there, there are many ways to get, see that this is zero. For example Lambda gamma m, uh, lambda gamma n, lambda gamma n, that's zero, but you also get zero because you contract m with p, m with p, so that, that's zero and the same thing for that, so the, the measure is just closed. So for then, that, uh, that equation lambda gamma m alpha lambda gamma m beta equals to zero, m doesn't have to be somewhere. No, it, it's contracted. Uh, it, this guy needs to be contracted because otherwise you, you can yeah, use some uh, okay. So I should probably say by n and then yeah. Okay, so, so then you are using it here. There is no sum here, right? No, it, 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 it is a sum. So m and p m and p. Right, so it's PISD closed, and a bit more subtle is to convince yourself that lambda 3, theta 5 is different than. So lambda itself is PISD invariant? Lambda itself is PISD invariant, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Q is, is lambda alpha, D alpha. And it doesn't act on um, So the um, now we want to show that lambda three theta five is not the BRC variation of something else, and this something else would be uh, would contain two lambdas and six thetas, right? 
Because one, one kita becomes a, a lambda and then you will get something like that. But um, you can convince yourself that, that there is no scalar that you can construct out of two lambdas and, and six thetas. Simply, th th there is nothing that you can construct that uh, has um, that becomes a scale, and yeah. But okay, so um, just as an exercise in gamma matrix identities, um, I okay, so I, I said that, that there is no scale in here. So, but, but what, what about this one? Let me write something. M, N, P, Q, R, L, lambda. Um, that's two lambdas, and, and now M, N, A. Um, theta. Yeah, so that, that's what Nathan said in 
on me now. It's, it's mine. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now, I, I, yeah, so the, the, the other thing that I, I wanted to, but we actually already shown this, is that the gauge variation of the amplitude is zero. Um, but, okay, so. So let, 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 let's show that the, the amplitude is, is gauge invariant. And um, if you vary del phi, you get Q of, of something else. And, and now, since, since the, we established that lambda 3 theta 5 is, is in the commodity, you are allowed to use integration by parts in the BRST charge. So, for example, um, so now the variation of the amplitude would be something like Q, say, if, if this is part for 1, Q of omega 1, like that, and then the U's, and then two additional V's. But this is zero because um, I'm, well, in the end that there will be only the zero modes and you, you will look at the lambda 3, the 5 and that's in the cohomology. So we integrate the BRC charge by parts. It becomes Q acting on everything. <coughs> uh, minus omega 1 and Q acting on and indeed, this is zero by, uh, because of the cohomology. The Q spinner bracket of something in BRC trivial is zero. And this is zero because every, every other insertion of, of vertices there is BRST closed. So this is zero. So the, the amplitude is, is KG fan. And The amplitude is also super symmetric. So that, that's, let's uh, check this. A is super symmetric. Uh, let, let's suppose that it, it was not super symmetric. So you, you would do a transformation, a super symmetric transformation on, on the theta alpha variable, say you shift by some epsilon, and suppose that you, you do this SUSY transformation and, and the, the amplitude changes, it's, it's not zero. So you say, well, what, 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 what can it be? It will be some epsilon and some, some spin, some, something that will contract this epsilon. So let, let's suppose this. So the amplitude is not super symmetric and remember that I said that in the end what, what you get must be PST invariant. So that, that's another uh, so A is of this form, right? Suppose and in, in Q of M is zero. That's and suppose that the amplitude varies like that, and, and now you ask yourself how can you get this result from, from, from this variation? The only way to get this result is um, if the M there contains a term like um, 3 lambda 5 thetas contracted like this, and then theta contracted with whatever that guy is, right? Because then, when, when I apply the, the measure, this becomes one. Oh, okay, so and I, I vary this, and then that becomes that part, and, and this becomes epsilon chi, right? 
but uh, but notice that so this this delta a that is epsilon chi that a is what yeah so um, the, a. that that is answering the question of what's the supersymmetric variation of the amplitude and then I'm saying suppose that it's not zero suppose that amplitude is not supersymmetric what 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 is something that the, the variation can be once you apply this okay. the, the only thing that it can be is uh, epsilon and then some 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 spin or containing the polarizations and, and all that okay. but uh, I'm just defining something to contact this epsilon the unit delta m is it delta m is epsilon chi? delta m no, delta a, the amplitude itself is saying epsilon times some chi well, this is chi expectation value of chi, isn't it? epsilon times expectation value of chi? Uh, because this chi is, is something that uh, I... Uh, because you wrote, below, you know, was there also a chi inside the matrix element? Uh, here, yes. Uh, what, what I'm saying is that you can get this result only if the M contains a term like that. Because... Yeah, so then the upper one is expectation value of chi. Yes. The upper one is delta A. Yeah, the conclusion is that you are using the same chi. One is, isn't the upper one the expectation value of chi? No, this chi is the same. But that should be the expectation value of the equation. That's what is being said. Okay, oh, that, 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 no, no, it's the expected. Well, I'm already taking the expected. For example, it, this guy can can be some uh, some Duino compacted with a gamma matrix like that, and then some some low polarization and something like that. So this is not that is not a worksheet operator. Yeah, this is a worksheet operator. It is not. No, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's constant of the super field general. Oh, I yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just defining whatever combination I get in the end, I call that chi. Yeah. And this chi contains the, the spin or uh, the, the gluons and right. the polarizations and the gluons and all that. And the, the, the only way that you could get this non vanishing answer is if the original expression here. What's that one? Why? Because uh, there, there is only one scalar that you can construct out of three lambdas, six thetas, and one uh, antiviral spin, whatever that is. So the, 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 there is only one scalar, and that, that's the scale. And then you see that if you apply there the. There is nothing else which has epsilon alpha under supersymmetry? Theta is the only variable inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this yes. Because at, at, at this point I'm I'm looking at uh, some correlation function with three lambdas and a bunch of thetas. That is is the end result of of, of doing a calculation. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, now what is the argument? Yeah, okay, so the, the argument now is that I assume, you, you need to assume this, but this guy does not satisfy that. This guy is not BRST closed. This factor is BRST closed, but that one is not. It simply becomes. This is the uh, form of delta A, or you said M should have an operator like that? A should. M, M. M, yeah. You said M should have an operator like that. Yes. That's what you said, right? Yes. So that is not delta A. It's a variation of the area. Oh, okay. A. Yeah. A. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, I use it the same, the same line twice because okay. A contains this, then delta A become, uh, has this epsilon, and then you use the, the, the lambda 3 d 5 measure, and then that's the non vanishing result for, for the variation of the amplitude. So you say, okay, it's non vanishing, the amplitude is not supersymmetric, but it cannot happen because A 
would, would have this term, and this term is not BRSC closed. And you are guaranteed that whatever you get in the end is BRSC closed, so it's a contradiction. So the amplitude is super symmetric. I'm sorry, Carlos. Can you prove X change or not? What? Can you prove X change or not? No. No, the, the, the supersymmetry that I apply is this one. Just in Yeah, I have very theta. Okay. So X doesn't change? No. But well, yes, the T doesn't change. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. X changes, but nothing depends on X, right? Because it's at zero. Zero. Yeah. Oh. X changes like the usual. Ah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but okay. Um. But it's at zero momentum, so nothing depends on. It. Yeah, the 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 X is at, at this point. They are all in the Copernicus effect. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so something. Uh, uh, it, it, it's on um, well, I'm sorry for what? Okay. But it, it changes. Um. <clears throat> okay, so, so now the, the last thing that I'm going to, to mention about the, the prescription is, is the superfield. So, so this last factor that you argue that it, it's not BRST invariant. Yeah. Last factor which yeah. you would need in A to get this epsilon chi beta. Yes. Uh, that is not BRST as it is for arbitrary chi. I mean, yes, yeah, it's not. So because a BRST variation is lambda chi. Uh, ah, okay. There, there is nothing to make that change. Okay. Okay, so the, the, the lesson here is well, um, expressions in, in the BRST cohomology of the pure spinner are that you get from, from the amplitude are gate invariant and super symmetric. So that, that's, that puts this, this condition into prominence in, in this whole business. Um, yes. So that, 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 for example, that's going to be important because I, I, I will show. Um, in the next lecture that you can even guess what, what the amplitudes are simply using uh, that condition at least for, for the super views 3 half amplitudes of fixing because about uh, 10 dimensional uh, super uh, super views is so uh, you can, yeah it's very constrained in so this A alpha A N alpha alpha F N N are the superannuals superfields in ten dimensions. Let's just describe any boson superannuals in ten dimensions. And the, the the versions that appear in, in, in the, the prescription there are they satisfy the linearized equation of motion. So there, there are four equations of motion. Later wrote one is known, which is this one. That's one linearized equation of motion, and uh, I will I will put a label here for the particle. And the other equation of motion for that one, AM, satisfies um, del M A alpha plus gamma M W alpha. That's uh, equation one, 
equals to 2. Equation 3 is their alpha uh, will be the, is 1 over 4 lemma m n alpha here beta l f n n and um, the, the fourth equation is del e alpha f n n is um, del n gamma n asymmetrical w of these are the, the four equations of motion at the linearized level and take notice of, of these numbers here because I, I will refer to them later um, <clears throat> and also I think in, in the third lecture I, I will mention the, the nonlinear version of, of these equations. But for, for now, it, it will be enough to know about the linearized version. And, uh, okay, so the, the last thing I, have, I wanted to mention before the break is uh, component expansions. Um, <coughs> Perhaps I, I should say a few words about how okay. So the, these, these superfields are uh, superfields and, and they depend on x and y factors, right? And I already said that <coughs> uh, the x dependence is, is always on the plane wave and, and then what remains is, is the superfield that depends on the t and, and now I, I need to show you um, the, the theta expansions of, of these superfields because <coughs> they, are, they, they will be important <coughs> if you, you want to compute uh, you, you want to get the component expansions of these <coughs> and, <coughs> and the, the way to, to get these theta expansions is um, you, use, you need to use a gauge condition to and the, the gauge condition is uh, that on theta alpha a alpha zero. Oh, by the way, I should I should mention that um, the well the, this condition here is called the uh, Harnad Schneider gauge. Harnad Schneider gauge. They they. They, they are two mathematicians that uh, notice that this is a convenient condition to, to get the expansions and they did this in 86 yeah, 86 and, uh, and the, the procedure that I'm going to explain here now it's you can, you can read in, in this paper by uh, it, it's, it's very convenient with uh, convenient with it and there. It's 0603 165 by meters uh, CPs and uh, polycast. Yeah. Uh, so the, the idea is you, you, you need to use that um, condition. In, Okay, so from, from this condition you get, for example, you act with del theta there, so that's zero.
And then the, the, the first term is um, it's delta of the atomic comes out from beta, and then minus theta alpha no beta a alpha. And now you use that means of motion one there, and then that, that becomes um, Minus d alpha a okay, So this is this theta x. These are quartic fields, right? Yes. Ah, okay. So d. Uh, so you are acting on this. this uh, yeah. So um, the the theta here is something like that. And then d theta also has del del theta. Yeah. That del beta is that one. Yeah. Is it zero more only? No, it uh, it acts only with the delta the part. Yeah, yeah but this one of the one is. I think you can ignore the fact that these are wire sheets. Right? You just treat, treat them as just one number. I mean, you for this part of the manipulation. Yeah. You can just treat them as numbers. Right? Yeah. But um. But eventually, you regard the theta as wire sheet fields, but. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Now depending on theta. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 can yeah you, you should think of, uh, of no you should not think about this as zero modes on. Um, but there is no explicit dependence on the Warshik coordinates except, except through theta. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, but okay. So now I'm confused. Uh, is it the zero? Okay, say say it's it's the zero mode because that, that's that's what going to that's what what's going to matter for us because we, we get stuff like that that depends on the superfluids and at, at 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 this level you are only looking at the zero modes. Otherwise, take integral over dz and then take functional differentiation. What? No. Okay. A alpha dz. Integrated no. Integrated. 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 And calculate the coordinator, right? No, but this is just manipulation involving yeah. treating the theta. I think that's the definition of this computation. Yeah. But otherwise, there will be a delta function z minus w. But that's not the way you think of it, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's like you, you define a curvature, R M and B Q, right? Even though the x's and x's are functions of the y axis. I want to compute the curvature of the curvature space manifold. Yeah, I understand. If that is that is how you are defining this computation, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that that <coughs> that that's what you get using the equation of motion one here, <coughs> and then the, this equation here becomes. Uh, one plus theta d acting on a alpha a beta it's gamma m theta beta a n this this one is is here hey, this is being done only in space time superior and you don't yeah. have to think about string yeah. 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 So it's not like that they are functional derivatives, right? No, yeah, no, exactly. No, exactly. No, That's it. Yeah. Those are also in terms of the Okay, so I'm 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 lost about that. Okay, so so that that's the condition that you you got from from there, and the, this operator here, theta contracted with the alpha simply counts how many 
fitness there are inside here. So uh, if if you if you if you say that a alpha is a alpha with zero thetas and then plus a alpha with bone theta and so forth up to 16. So this n here will count. You, you want to find out the, the components with that number of thetas. And that's the equation that this guy will satisfy. And then you can, you can, uh, you can invert this, this operator because it becomes 1 plus n when it acts on, on, on that guy. So what, what it means is that uh, a alpha uh, a beta with n thetas is uh, 1 plus 1 over n gamma n theta alpha a m with now n minus 1 thetas inside this guy. So you, you relate the N, n's component of a beta with the n minus one component of n minus one power of thetas from a m. So that's one equation. Uh, it, it's it's here. Um, I'm I'm using the equation of motion and the equation of motion uh, looks at the um, no, but in the next step, only 1 plus theta delta x and a beta. This d, d will have a delta n, right? That will ah. not k n. So what was that? Um, that will have, uh, it's a zero moment. Ah, okay. No, 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 no. A at this point, uh, I'm, I'm using the... I, I wrote that somewhere, that uh, I expand the... So the, these guys here are, are just the, the thickness. So, I just want to find out that, that there are no x's anymore here. Okay. I, I, I just want to find the expansion. The so the expansion. Schneider, the H2 is only for theta, a theta, not into the ITX, is it? Oh, the wouldn't have matter. Uh, well, at, at this it point, it does oh, matter. It's written here. Um, at this point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But what, what, I, what I, I, I want to use this condition for is to find out the, the heat expansion of that part. So I'm, I'm not looking at the, the plane waves. I think, Carlos, I think you're using the theta d. The d dx doesn't contribute to it. D L, d is. Yeah, uh, so, OK, so that, that's the theta d acting on a superfield with, um, say, m with n thetas, that's, uh, that's the same thing as n, n, n. What I'm trying to say is that theta d does not involve dx. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah yes, 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 yes. yes. It, it, it doesn't matter. No. The theta squared is zero, so theta d is only in the theta del theta plus theta into gamma mu del by del x. So theta squared is zero. So del, 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 oh del. yeah, yeah. That, that's another way to see because uh, you contract theta there, then you, you get this term here, theta gamma n theta. So that, that term is not there, by uh, also by by that argument. No, this term is not there. Can be. No, in, in, in this group. Theta d is not there. D, d, d ah, is okay. always there. Yes, theta d is not there. D is yeah, always yeah, that yeah, form. Yeah. But so when you contact that, that one, yeah. it simply becomes this operator, theta alpha del yeah, theta, yeah. which counts the number of thetas that. I don't think one form of symmetry of one Theta gamma is zero. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, the gamma is symmetric. Because the, the it, this is symmetric, the dominant is and the theta is from your um, condition. So that the index in the right hand side of that to theta. A beta is close to the dominant theta. Yeah. Yeah, there will be the lower index of that. Alpha. 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 Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, thank
Okay, so um, the, the other ones you, uh, okay, you simply, for example, contract theta alpha here with the second equation, you get the counting operator here, this one vanishes and you get theta. So the, if, if you do that for the second equation, you, you get, you simply write down the, the recursion now. <coughs> Contracting the second equation with theta alpha gives you um, that it relates the ends component of um, this guy with one over n theta gamma <coughs> w and now this w has n times one theta component. That's the condition you get from here. And you, you also get, you also play the same games with the 3 and 4 there. And in the end you get, um, for example, uh, a recursion relation for W alpha with N vector R. With N thetas, it's Again, the n n minus one theta from a of and okay and uh, yeah so that that's it. So what what these equations mean is that if if you start if you if you say my superfield a m with zero theta, I define that to be the polarization vector of a boom. And if you say that the zero component of W alpha is the domino polarization, and you, you plug this, uh, this initial data here, you get all the <coughs> other theta components for, for the superfields. Uh, for example, with n equals zero here, that's n equals 1, that gives you that uh, the one theta component of, of that is, is um, okay, so let, let me just write down. a beta with 1 theta is 1 over 2 gamma m theta beta and then the polarization vector that I chose there. So that, that's the one theta component of A of M. It's clear that you can you can go up to 16 theta this way and that, that's how you find out the theta expansion of, of these superfields. Right, and uh, perhaps I should just write down a few terms that uh, you get in the end. And so, and so far, so, um, we are actually not going to, to need 
these, these theta expansions anymore. Just, uh, just, uh, I, I will just do one example using this. Um, perhaps um, some, yeah, I guess, um, but I, I, I'm not really at the natural stopping point. <laughs> <laughs> so, but okay. No. We can spend on that in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I think 10 minutes. If you can let it sit there, what will be there? So you can probably just go and come back in 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's do that. Can you briefly describe it quickly? Uh, okay. So you know, put in the vertex operators. Yeah. So uh, I, I just said uh, now I suppose I want to complete the component expansion of this correlation, mm -hmm. and then I use the, the three points example, which is the simplest. So it's v one, v two, v three. And now I know the theta expansions of mm -hmm. because if e is lambda alpha a alpha. So I, I use these expansions and you, I said, well, since you, you look at theta phi volume, mm -hmm. and then the, there, there are just a few possibilities to separate five theta. Yes. So we take one theta from here, two from there, two from there, and then some permutations, two, one, two, yes. and then I, I said, okay, let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And then for, for the field one, I use the theta one component, so it's a dual, mm -hmm. a dual here, and then the, the duino is the field two, okay. and then duino is the field three, okay. from, from these two times. Okay. And now I need to evaluate this correlation, so what, what, what you can do. Okay. And then I said, well, uh, I mean, I, I can use a phi as an entity for this theta, theta there. And then I use this one. Yeah, so this factor, this, this factor with that factor becomes this factor here. Okay. 1 over 96 and like that. So, so now you see that I am going to collect all the lambdas and thetas that are in this correlator. I factor out this guy. And then that's the correlator that remains to be gone. And now M and P and A, B, C are, are free back rings. So I, I, need a, I need to know what's the answer for that. If, if you know that when you contract everything, M and P with M and P, you get one. And then that's the only, well, the only possibility. Because when you contract A, B, C here with M and P, you get one. And that's how you And then, once, once you use that one, and then uh, compact some structure, that's, that's the answer you get. Um, and then that's the, the three-point interaction that uh, Milton talked about. Okay. And what is that reference about? This one? Oh, this one is uh, so I use this identity here. Okay. And in the appendix of this paper, there are all these identities there.
So you, you've all seen that it's it's a it's a bit of a complicated business to expand the the, the computer component expansion of of these superfields. But uh, and but right now I, I'm going to emphasize the the features of using the, the pure spinner superspace language uh, instead of just looking at the component expansions. And what what I mean by pure spinner superspace, it's um, it's something that contains this uh, pure spinner bracket with three lambdas and an arbitrary combination of uh, function with, with super fields uh, with, with the super field. where everything that is inside here is zero modes only right um, and with the condition that this guy here is BRST closed. Just, just like, um, for example, I, just like the, the V1, V2, V3. That, that's an expression which is an example of a pure spin or superspace expression. It's uh, written with three lambdas and the superfields inside here are PRST closed. So that, that's, that's the definition of what they call pure spin or superspace. Um, yeah, so I think this is PRST uh, closed and it, it's, it's not PRST trivial. And so why why this this is important? There are a few a few facts that um, will, will, will make this 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 language very very powerful. It's um, well the, the first one is that the the BRST cohomology the Q cohomology. Homology is, is, is essential, it uh, plays a fundamental role. It's fundamental. Two, the BRST charge is very simple. It cannot be simpler than that. And um, and notice that you have this covariant derivative there and the, and the pure spinner. And the, the other fact is that, well, you see there are these d alpha, and, and then you have the equation of motion that involves this d alpha. So the superimposed equation of motion are very simple. over there and they involve this d alpha in a very simple manner and this d alpha is also there in the BRC charge. So the building that you come out of the fundamental of the first step. Yeah it's uh, fundamental. Um, it, the <coughs> there, there is a notion of a cohomology here, the, the lambda three theta five. And in these expressions. I, I just wrote this in order to make it clear that it's there. Okay. Right? And, and now I'm just stating some, some facts that the BRC charge is simple, involves lambda and d, the equation of motion are very simple over there and involves this d alpha there. 
And uh, another thing that you should, you should notice is uh, okay, so perhaps it's uh, like it's Q on anything. You take the pure spinner bracket that's zero. That's the cohomology condition of, of the measure. So you also have this, this identity there. And another thing is that uh, three pure spinners is a, is a very constraining thing to have. Uh, what, 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 do, what do I mean by that? There are not too many. There are not too many contractions that you you, you can const different contractions that you can construct out of three pure spinners uh, because mo most of them vanish. Say for example, uh, okay, C three uh, number three is uh, restricts a lot of the, the possibilities of contractions like that. So for example, um, uh, lambda gamma m lambda is zero, so that gets rid of many possibilities, but also lambda gamma m m p lambda is zero, the three form is also zero, and in fact the only surviving uh, bilinear of lambda is, is the 5 form. That's what Nathan was explaining this morning. So that's the only non vanishing contribution, but you also have an, an additional lambda. So what can you do with that lambda? So for example, the lambda, if, if you now have lambda and then gamma and the, the, the vector index there is contracted with any of the indices there, for anything, for any alpha here, any other contraction there, that's also zero. Right? So, what, 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 for example, uh, suppose you, you just wanted to, to get uh, one possibility of a, of a correlator and then you say, okay, I computed a, an amplitude and I got this, MNPQR. Lambda gamma m w one and uh, say uh, w two m p q w three. Now I need to um, <coughs> say and then uh, how what what else can I do? Okay. Uh, Well, uh, okay, so it, it, it doesn't matter the rest here, because if you say that you, you arrive at an amplitude and that's the answer you got, then it's zero, because you are contracting M there, so it's, it's not there. So, so having three lambdas, in, in the answer is very restrictive of the, the possibilities of superfields that you can combine. So that, that, that's very useful when you are, you are trying to guess for example, the, the results of amplitudes, just from, from the structure of what we expect to get, because that there are not too many options. Um. For closed strings, you will just add the uh, other sector? Yeah. Yeah, for. And that's not more security. Yeah, you, no, it's, uh, you, you basically just do the homomorphic square. Um. Okay, so so th these are these are the, the facts that make this pure spin superspace very uh, powerful to analyze the amplitude. And uh, so, for example, I, I'm just going to 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 write down to to show to you one kind of manipulation that uses these these facts here. In a, in a way that you arrive at an a interesting result. So, for example, suppose that you have a, 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 
correlation, which is V1, lambda, gamma, M, W2, lambda, gamma, M, W3, F, MN4. Right? That's, that's one super space expression. Now suppose that you have another one which is M N P Q R lambda gamma S W one um, Zero. 
So these two guys here are zero because of that. And then when Q hits F, you use the equation of motion 4. Uh, that you cannot really see over there. But that equation of motion here. So you see you get a gamma W. So you, you get, um, when Q hit here, you get something like lambda gamma um, uh, momentum gamma n w. But now gamma n contracts here. And then that's zero. Because of the identity well, one of the first identities I wrote is uh, lambda gamma n lambda gamma n contract with anything that's zero. So that's another example of five that. So okay, so these these two guys are BRST closed. And we are going to use that in the computation of of this guy here. Okay, so you when Q acts here, you will get something like um, you get one of a four. Okay, I, 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 will, I will not. So, what are you computing here in this line? Well, I, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm computing zero as the BRST trivial quantity, uh, the correlator of a BRST trivial quantity. And the BRST trivial quantity, I chose to be okay. that one. That's guaranteed to be zero because of that. And, and uh, I'm, I'm going to derive an identity from, from this condition that will relate those two over there. And I, I'm just doing this because it's a, it's, it's a nice example of, of how uh, yeah, powerful this Perspin and superspace is because you, you look at two different looking expressions, but they are not really uh, different because of they need to satisfy all these constraints and it's, it's, uh, it's very constrained. Okay, but uh, I'm not going to worry about the, the, the overall coefficient here. But uh, so when Q hits on, on this first factor, you get lambda gamma r n n p q or let me just um, use the same and then f 1 t u I use it the equation of motion 3 over there so that, that's the factor you get, and then you simply copy this part here, uh, um, multiply by, by this, uh, let's say it's a triangle. A triangle. That's the first time. And when Q hits here, you get zero. Don't need to worry. When Q hits on F3 RS, you also get zero. Because C, R, S is contracted here, S and R. And then that's the, the second identity over there. So the only other contribution comes from this term. When Q hits F, M, N. And then you, you use the equation of motion 4, and you get something proportional to. Uh, I, okay, minus 4 over 4. And, um, Minus four lambda gamma r and n w one s w four and then now I use the case of motion I get two times momentum n lambda gamma n w two 
I get two times because it's anti-symmetrized in M and M, but this guy is anti-symmetrized. So and uh, and then multiply by F R S. <coughs> so these are the, the two contributions that you get once once you evaluate this E0. So okay, this is zero. And now um, Okay, so you can see that the, the first line here is actually uh, you get this lambda gamma s w4 f2 f3 and then rs and then the, the five form here because of this condition that only the five form survives <coughs> you can you can uh, use the gamma matrix make its identities to write down as a proper five form. So you get R M N T T U. Right? And then this term is proportional to this one, up to minus sign step. And now we, we need to analyze this this term here. So what what can you do? And now you see that you have a lambda gamma n here. And there is an n sitting inside there with a lambda here. So what, what, I, what we want to do is to use this identity here to contract this m, to put this n together with the, the lambda to, to get rid of the term. And the, the, the way you do this is you use the gamma matrix identity for for that part, and um, you will get two terms. You get um, that this is equal to two times lambda gamma n w one lambda gamma r w two because uh, I I basically use it. Um, I, I got uh, a term which contains R N, right? So I contracted this this N with this that, and I got this R. So that that's one term from from, from this factor here <coughs> and from that factor there, and then minus um, lambda gamma R. W1 lambda gamma M W2. Okay. Um, I, I just got rid of this N. In doing that, I, I got these two terms. And now you see that. Uh, okay, oh, I forgot the. The label of the momentum here. It's momentum two. And now you see that this momentum two m is the same is the same m there. So I, I use the case of motion that uh, the, the 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 Dirac case of motion where if I contract this with k two m that comes from here, that that factor here is zero. So the, the, the second term here is zero. <coughs> so okay. So Sorry. So the first lambda, the first factor, the, the first result. Yeah. How? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so how did you get that? Okay. Um. Which one? <coughs> so uh, what, what 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 I did here is I use it gamma uh, d an identity that looks like this oh. and. And then I said, uh, this is M R, and then plus or minus. Uh, I don't remember the signs, but it's um, okay. N N and uh, yeah, gamma R, and then plus or minus delta N R gamma M. It's it's the gamma matrix identity. 
So this term here will vanish because it's contracted with, with uh, lambda here, and then you get the lambda gamma there. And you use this identity. So the, the first term here is zero. That, that's the, the whole idea of, of using the this gamma matrix identity is you want to get rid of this contraction there, and then these two terms are, are these ones. Okay, so that is something to that. Um, and then you got two terms from here, and one term vanishes using the Dirac equation of motion. So you got it's just one term. So what 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 the term looks like? Um, okay, the, the first term here is is that one. So we, we, we don't care about it anymore. So let, let's look at this this guy here. Um, in the end we get lambda gamma m w1 lambda gamma r w2 and then lambda gamma s w4 and then k2 n Oh, um. Okay, uh, I, I already wrote it there, so it's. Oh, then there is also the F, F3, yeah? F3 RS. So then that's the, this term here. So that's inside the correlate. So we, we got, since the original expression is zero, we got that this term is equal to that term. But that term is still not like this. So what, what can we do with, with that term? Um, so let, let's just check uh, M, M, R, S. Okay, it's, it's correct. Um, let, let's let's um, now you um, you can analyze this this term here. You see, it's a lambda gamma m w one, and I say that this is equal to Q acting on a one. N <coughs> minus A1N V1. I use the equation of motion two. Um, this equation of motion here. Right? Because I, I want to get this term. And that's equal to Q on A M and then I subtract that part. And I get this. So now, this is all inside the, the pure spinner correlator, and you see uh, that there is a DRC charge here. And then you integrate by parts because of, of this guy. And you see that the, the remaining factors here are DRC event because you have RS, RS, FRS. So the, the, this first term is zero in the cobalt, it's not there. And then what remains is K1M contracted to, with K2M. So you get a major stem very uh, in fact, uh, S12. So that's the result, S12, V1, <coughs> then lambda, uh, lambda gamma W, lambda gamma W, F. With, with the indices contracted in the same way as that. So what, what this computation showed to you is that uh, K2, like <coughs> K2 is proportional to S12, K1. And what, why is this interesting? Because um, 
this kinematic factor here appears in the in the one loop computation for the four point amplitude and it's proportional to T8 F to the fourth. And that, that's the kinematic factor um, for, for the true loop four point amplitude. And uh, it's T8 it of that form. So, um, okay, and, and, and these two amplitudes were computed in 2004 for this one by, in a paper by uh, Berkowitz, and the, the, the two loop four point was computed by Berkowitz in 2005. And uh, so th this, this identity there already shows you at the superspace level that the, the result is correct because well, you, you, you get the, the expected relation with, with the, the one loop amplitude. So it's a, it's a superspace proof that uh, this correlator is correct. So there is a factor of G square which are equal, set to 1. So 1 is 2 loop, 1 is 2 loop, or 1, one loop, or 1 is 2 loop, right? Yeah. So there is a factor of G square, you have set to 1, G and G square. Uh, that's the factor that's now in 1 loop and 2 loop, and 2 loops. I see. So what is the factor that you have? Yeah, what is the factor? This is a kinematic factor. Yeah, it's just what you get. You have not shown the how it comes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's um, yeah, I, I, I didn't show the, the full amplitude, it's just the kinematic it's, it's, it's thing. The so, for example, the, 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 the four point at one loop would be something like this k1, and then the integral of the normalized space, oh, uh, well, it, it will be the homomorphic square of that, and then the covalence effect. Oh, nice. And then the LCs and the covalence but that, that's the kinematic factor that you get. And uh, uh, a similar thing is also uh, the, the two loop amplitude with, with uh, you get that Ys factor that, um, that you mentioned. But it, it's, <coughs> this example here is just one, one example of, of uh, an application of these five. So uh, yes, one, two is what? What? Oh, okay, S, S12. Okay, I forgot to mention. Thank you for asking. It's, it's the Mendel's name event, which is uh, momentum 1 compacted with momentum 2. And, and it comes from here, because I use this identity there. It's the equation of motion 2. And then you get a momentum 1 with an index m. And there is another momentum too, it's an index M, so it, it gets contracted. <coughs> and then uh, that's the, the model kinematic factor. <coughs> so the, this, this is, uh, uh, the, this computation here what was done in a paper uh, in 2008. Something like that. It, you, you can regard as a as a super space proof of the equivalence between the the, the true loop amplitudes in the pure spinner and in the RNS. But um, <clears throat> okay, that's okay. Uh, I I guess um, <clears throat> that, that that's what I I, I wanted to, to emphasize. And so the the. Well, what you should take away from uh, this discussion is that pure spin and super space is, is very promising in allowing these kind, kind of manipulations uh, uh, with these type of proofs. And, uh, it's very powerful. So that's it.